Hi guys, Sarah here. I hope you're all well. Today I have a fun video where I'm going to share 12 art supplies I consider to be essential when I'm painting, and that may also be useful gift ideas for any budding artists out there. They're not super expensive items, or even specific to one art medium, but they are things that make my art practice a lot easier and more enjoyable, so I hope you find it interesting or helpful. Just for fun, I thought I'd present these 12 supplies to you in the style of an advent calendar, but the items I've chosen aren't in order of importance or anything, but they do generally follow the order in which I tend to use them. If you are interested in picking up any of these items for yourself, by the way, I will list them all down in the description box and leave a link to Jackson's Art Store where you might be able to pick some of them up. This is an affiliate link, which means if you buy anything using it, I do get a small commission at no extra cost to you. So thank you in advance for helping to support my channel. So without further ado, let's get an open door number one. So the first item is a mechanical pencil. And the one I've been loving at the moment is this Grit Plus from Faber-Castell. It has a thicker barrel than most other mechanical pencils, so it's nice and sturdy to hold while still having a fine 0.7mm lead. And the good thing about mechanical pencils is that they're great for details and don't need constant sharpening, so they're great for throwing in your bag when you take your sketchbook out. Another thing I love about this pencil is the eraser on the end. It's much thicker than you get on most other mechanical pencils, and when it wears down, you simply twist the end to get a new bit of eraser. So no fuss or fiddling with trying to pull out the eraser like with some models. The second item I found I use a lot is a graphite stick. This is an item I've had for absolutely years, and actually came in a student art set from WH Smith's. I use it instead of a regular pencil or transfer paper to transfer my drawings onto my watercolour paper. So rather than draw directly onto my watercolour paper and risk spoiling it with eraser marks, I tend to rough out the outline first on cheap printer paper. Once I'm done with erasing and correcting my sketch, I then take the graphite stick and cover the reverse of my sketch with graphite and transfer the drawing onto my nice paper, ready for painting. If you use this reverse method for transferring drawings, this little stick can both save time and the wearing down of your regular pencils, so I always keep it in my pencil case. Once my sketch is on my paper, I then use the art supply behind door number three, a kneadable eraser. I like the Faber-Castell ones, but I'm sure you can get others similar. This is how it looks when you first buy it. They aren't expensive, but they are extremely versatile. This is how mine looks now. I use it for lifting excess graphite from my drawing paper prior to painting, but they're also great for simply erasing without ruining the tooth of your paper. And because they're kneadable, you can even erase the tiniest of marks. Behind door number four is something I use all the time, washi tape and this comes in all different shapes, sizes and designs. I use it for two things. Firstly, to create a nice crisp white border around my artwork. And secondly, as a way to secure my watercolour paper to my surface. This can help to prevent or at least minimise any buckling or warping of the paper when you add water. I have tried lots of different tapes, but one brand I find particularly good is MT Tape. This is strong enough that it doesn't tear when you pull it from the roll, as I found with some cheaper tapes, but not too sticky that you have trouble with tearing when you try and remove it from your paper. A lot of problems with your paper tearing can be down to the paper you're using, but I would always advise you check on a scrap piece of paper first before trying it out on your actual artwork, so you don't find out the hard way and ruin your painting. I also have another trick to try to prevent tearing of your paper, but I'll talk to you more about that in a bit. Let me know if you have a favourite washi tape brand and drop me a comment in the box below. Next, and for my fifth essential supply, bulldog clips or fold back clips. I use these every time I paint in my sketchbook to hold the pages down when I'm painting, as not every sketchbook lays flat. They're also essential if you like painting outside to stop your pages flapping about, so I always keep them close by. 
Again, they are really inexpensive and come in a range of sizes and designs to fit your needs. Behind door number six is a mapping pen. This pen is designed for geological mapping, as the name suggests, but is also ideal for use with ink for writing or sketching. Personally though, I use it to apply masking fluid, as being metal, it doesn't get damaged like brushes would when the masking fluid dries, and you can just wipe it clean. The little wheel on the side here also allows you to change the amount of masking fluid or ink you can pick up, so you can vary the width of the lines you put down. It's perfect for masking out fine whiskers on animals or tiny highlights in eyes and that kind of thing. You can also use it with a ruler to draw really straight lines, which you couldn't easily do with a brush. So this supply certainly makes things a lot easier and I really enjoy using it. Essential supply number seven is a simple water spray bottle. I keep a small glass one of these on my desk as it's useful to pre-wet your paints if you're using watercolour pans or mist over gouache or acrylic paints to keep them from drying out too quickly. I also use it to pre-wet my watercolour paper if I want to paint larger areas wet on wet, so I couldn't be without it. Again, this is a very inexpensive supply that could make a big difference to your workflow. You can find glass or plastic spray bottles in lots of different stores, as it's not exclusively an art supply, but I definitely recommend getting one if you haven't got one already. Moving on to art supply number eight, which is the paint puck. It looks a bit funny, but this little device is amazing for helping to clean your brushes. All you do with this is secure it with a suction cup to the bottom of your water container or rinse cup before you fill it up with water and then when you want to remove paint from your brush you simply rub it onto the bumpy paint puck which helps to dislodge the paint. It's especially good if you like working in gouache or acrylic but I keep it in my water jar when painting in watercolour as well. You would need to be gentle if using natural hair brushes though as they are more delicate than synthetic ones but I think it's a brilliant invention which saves time and helps keep your brushes from getting clogged up with paint. Behind door number nine is the Eradicator brush. I've mentioned this brush in previous videos as I use it quite a lot. The Eradicator brush is made by UK based company Rosemary & Co and is available in four sizes, small, like this one, medium, large or extra large. And with its short, flat synthetic bristles is great for lifting watercolour paint from your paper. I use it a lot for lifting out highlights, but it's also useful to lift out unintentional paint marks too. So it's kind of like an eraser for watercolour. Obviously how effective it is at lifting colour will depend on the staining properties of the pigments you're trying to lift but it's such a useful little brush to have and at around five pounds for this small brush won't break the bank either. To use it, you simply dampen the brush with water, blot off the excess on a paper towel and gently rub over the paint you want to lift. As the paint begins to loosen, you can lift it up with a clean paper towel. It's quick and easy and has definitely saved a few of my paintings from hitting the cutting room floor. Now at number 10 I've included my heat tool. This may not be considered an essential supply to some and may actually be frowned upon by others, but as someone who often has limited time available to paint, it is an absolute must. I rarely have time to wait for paint to dry naturally between layers and with watercolour especially, being able to build up in layers from light to dark is what gives you the luminosity and vibrancy that watercolour is known for. So I found that having a heat tool can make the difference between me doing a painting and deciding I don't have enough time, which is super frustrating. Oh, and that other trick I mentioned earlier to prevent your washi tape tearing your paper is to apply your heat tool to it for a few seconds beforehand. It works a treat. Door 11 next, and it may not come as a surprise that I've included white ink, as I use this a lot in my artwork to add white highlights and details at the end of a painting. There are a whole multitude of different white supplies available, either as gel pens, gouache or inks, 
but the one I've been really enjoying lately is the FW White Acrylic Ink by Dayla Rowney. I also experimented with mixing this with coloured inks to produce some lighter, opaque effects in my Inktober paintings this year. And I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one if you want to check out the results. The advantage of the white acrylic ink over some of the others is that it dries permanent and unlike some of the alternatives mentioned, doesn't seem to fade as much when dry. So often one layer is all you need. Let me know though which white you use as I'd be really interested to know. So on to day 12 and the last of my 12 essential art supplies, the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. And if I could only pick one supply from the 12, it would be this one that I'd pick. This little pot of brush cleaner is fantastic at cleaning even dried in acrylic from brushes. It's amazing. It's also recommended for cleaning oil paint and watercolour and I've recently used it for removing gouache from my brushes too. It's like a fancy block of soap but you simply take your dirty paintbrush, rinse it under the tap and swirl it around in the cleaner and hey presto loads of paint comes out. Once clean, you can then reshape your brushes and they look good as new, ready for the next time. I cannot rate it highly enough. This small pot currently costs £6.80 on Jackson's and I've had it for well over two years, so it's a great investment and can help you keep your brushes nicer for longer. But that's it for my top 12 essential art supplies. Do let me know what you think and I'd love to know what supplies you can be without as well. So drop me a comment in the box below and perhaps we can share ideas. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what sketchbook project I've been working on recently, please subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when I post that video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.